Well, it's almost January and you know what that means. A whole nother year of movie going. Even though January is traditionally a dumping ground for movies that studios don't think are gonna do all that well, that doesn't mean that we here on screen are going to be able to ignore them. Maybe there won't be anything of interest to you this month, but in any case, here's a look at the crap fest that's about to hit. We're starting out on January 6th with The Devil Inside, the latest possession movie shot from a found footage perspective. Doesn't look all that good, but originally it was supposed to share the weekend with another possession movie that got pushed off till July. Fun fact. Up next on January 13th, we have Beauty and the Beast 3D, the latest entry in what is sure to be a very long series of Disney 3D re-releases. Also that week, our contraband, the latest Mark Wahlberg action thriller Glower Fest, also starring Giovanni Ribisi and Kate Beckinsale. There's also Joyful Noise, undoubtedly the best movie coming out in January about auto-tuned church choruses that stars Dolly Parton and Queen Latifah. Next up on January 20th, we have Haywire, a movie that I am actually looking forward to. Hopefully Gina Carano can actually act, but if not, we're still guaranteed to have a bunch of Steven Soderbergh directorial tricks, as well as a supporting cast that includes Michael Fassbender, Ewan McGregor, and Michael Douglas. Also that weekend is Red Tails, the George Lucas produced, Anthony Hemingway directed look at African American fighter pilots in World War II. Reportedly Lucas even stepped behind the camera for reshoots on this movie. So it'll be interesting to see if we're dealing with another poltergeist situation where there's a shadow director. Also that weekend is Underworld Awakening, the newest entry into the Underworld series, which of course are generally just excuses to see Kate Beckinsale wear skin tight leather clothing. In limited release, we have Coriolanus, Ray Fine's directorial adaptation of the grim Shakespeare play, brought into the modern world setting so that now we can take in our Shakespeare without being deprived of a grimacing Gerard Butler with a machine gun. Also that weekend, extremely loud and incredibly close goes wide, if you like cloying sentimentality. Here's hoping it's good though. Lastly, on January 27th, we have The Grey, where Liam Neeson straps on gloves made of broken glass and attempts to kill the wolves that had kidnapped his daughter. Also that weekend is Man on a Ledge, the second movie in less than a year that features a man threatening to commit suicide by jumping from the ledge of a high rise. Here though, it's Sam Worthington attempting to provide cover for a girl in lingerie who's attempting to rob a building nearby. Lastly, there is One for the Money, the Katherine Heigl starring adaptation of the Janet Ivanovich novel that actually looks like it might be kind of fun. There'll be romance and comedy, and that's why they call them romantic comedies, except this one has guns. And that's all there is to talk about for January, assuming nothing gets added to the schedule at the last second, and we're also not talking about some of the limited releases. Anyway, if you had to pick a single movie to see this month, what would it be? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next month for the February preview here on screen.com. He's mine, or I am his. My wife and my kids again? No, mm, oh, done. We're going to war. Planes to the last bullet, to the last minute, to the last man we fight. 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 Twenty stories up, on the man on the ledge was hijacked. Thomas, you listen to me, and you come home.